This is my slap presentation. And um, my one sentence summary is A Raisin in the Sun by Lorraine Hansberry is the story of an African American's family or African American family struggle to fit into a white society in the 1950s South Side of Chicago. Um, the scene that I've chosen to analyze is found in Act Three, and it is the last scene of the play. Um, here we see Walter who is at his lowest point, stand up against a powerful antagonist, Carl Lindner, who is a member of the Clybourne Park um, Improvement Association. And he is attempting to take away their home because of, you can call it, racial differences. And rather than continue to make selfish and irrational decisions, which Walter has been doing pretty much the whole play, he decides to change his fate and support his family. Um, this is an important scene because it's reflecting the central theme of the play, the, the importance of the American dream. Um, the whole idea of the play is to reflect the idea of, of what a raisin in the sun really means. Um, when Hansberry wrote the title of the play, she wanted to get the notion of people's dreams being tossed away and dying, um, similar to a grape being in the sun and shriveling up and turning into a raisin. Um, at this point in the story, it feels like the dreams of the family have fallen apart as, as all odds are really pushing against them. Um, but ultimately, the strength of their familial values are what's bringing them together in the end. The line that I've chosen to reflect this scene in the play as a whole, found on page 1260, is when Walter finally takes a stand against Lindner and tells him they're, they're keeping the house. He says to Carl, yeah, well, what I mean is that we keep is that we come from people who had a lot of pride. I mean, we're very proud people. And that's my sister over there. And she's going to be a doctor. And we're very proud. During the period in the 50s, the American dream for most people consisted of the father or the eldest male in the house to be the primary breadwinner or supporter of the home. Um, as well, we recently learned about the concept of a super objective in lecture. And we noticed that Walter's super objective is to fulfill that, that generic um, American dream thought um, throughout the majority of the play until the last scene where we see a whole new side of him. Um, but we see him make several mistakes to attempt to achieve that dream, such as throwing away all of Mama's insurance money um, in the attempt to start a drugstore business. Um, another example of a super objective is seen in Benita's um, dream to be a doctor and how that's really conflicting with Walter and what he wants to do with the money. Um, but we see that this line at the end of the play shows that Walter's change in super objective was initially the concept of becoming rags to riches, um, which was the mindset of a lot of the people at the time. Um, to instead supporting his family's goals and dreams. And he did this by standing up against Carl and supporting his family over, over his own personal goals. Um, the gesture that Walter made shows the play's main theme of supporting, understanding, and valuing everyone's dreams. He gave up his dream because he, he and, and along with the rest of his family, realized that the most important dream is to unite everyone together, and that would be by buying this new house and they didn't really care they didn't yeah they didn't really care at the time what forces were working against them the action that i chose is further expressing the theme of the play um as the whole family is really taking a particular action while lindner starts to pack up and leave um the book describes it as he finishes almost ignored by the family who are concentrating on walter lee um while Lindner and what he has to say are very significant to the plot line of the story at this point in the play, no one seemed to care because they were all so dumbfounded and amazed by what Walter had said. It's almost as if the family was looking at him as an entirely new person, and to some regard, he was a new person. This was such a jaw-dropping moment, um, not just for the people reading and the audience in the play, but the actual characters too, because they had never really seen... They had never seen the emotional, heartfelt side of Walter before. Walter, just moments before, was convinced that he was going to have Carl walk into the house and he was going to sign this agreement to give away the house. But it was like almost a light switch in his head that told him he had to do what needed to be best for his family. And that was instead 
not worrying about his own dreams, but worrying about the families as a whole. And another thing is that this moment was showing how influential Walter was on the family themselves. They never wanted him to make a ton of money or support them through wealth. They just wanted him to be present and involved in their dreams and goals. And while Walter had a fair share of issues with all these people in the house, they all continuously looked up to him for support. And this was a key moment to see that because we had never seen that sort of heartfelt compassion from Walter before. And my production element is actually two elements put together because they feel like they kind of go hand in hand in promoting the positivity of the next chapter of the younger family's life. Um, these two things include Mama's acting as she's wandering around the house, um, getting her last look at this chapter of the life that she had, along with the dimming of the lighting. Um, the lights sort of suggest um, both in reality the end of the play as well as the end of this sequence of their life. Um, Mama does an amazing job acting as she's slowly and passionately traveling around the house, reminiscing all these memories that they've had in this house, all the issues that they've had, and the lights continue to dim down, kind of bringing a darkness or eeriness to it, kind of suggesting that there was a lot of not good stuff that was going on in this house and it was kind of tearing the family apart and the darkness is really promoting that idea and now that they're all leaving the house one by one they're all leaving and this is like a whole new step for them as they're going somewhere where they're united and happy all together um to conclude my final question will be um while the play was written and took place in the 50s the peak of the civil rights movement how do you think this conversation with carl lindner would have gone in today's era um would the conversation have been similar um would it have even happened in the first place um if so what would it look like and that is all. Thank you very much.